Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Welcome to a weekend edition. Today we are looking at Pixel Mash, a brand new pixel application from Never Center, the makers of Silo and other development tools. Um, now this is a commercial application in a very crowded space. So the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth that 25 bucks? And we're gonna find that out quickly now. Stay tuned, because this tool is actually quite cool. It's not just another pixel paint application. It is worth your time. Is it worth your money? Well, that's for you to decide. So we're gonna take a hands-on look at it. Now you can download a seven-day demo uh, available over here. Of course, I will toss this link down below like I always do. And as you can see, it is available for PC and Mac. So sorry, Linux people, um, perhaps it runs under Wine. I am unaware to be honest. But once you download the demo, it is full functioning for a week. And here it is in action. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new project. And you can set a couple of things here. This is the nice thing about this guy is it's designed to be multi-resolution resolution and resolution independent. So first thing you can do is set how big you want to create your sprite. So do 128 by 128. And then this is the actual editing resolution. So this is gonna be 10 times that. So 1280 by 1280. It allows you to uh, work with a lot more detail. So there you see your grid was really um, highly created, but you can easily move between different levels of detail using this slider up here, which is kind of a cool feature. And let's look really simple functionality first, and then we'll move from there. So over here you see you've got your palette control. You've got layers and animation, kind of what you'd expect. Don't worry, there's a whole lot more to it than what you just saw here. But what I can do is go ahead and draw something. So let's say this blue, and then the circle is marked to this. Um, that's the size of your editing tool. Um, so you can zoom in and out your uh, grid, and then that will correspond. So if I want to just do a single pixel, I just zoom out my grid. If I want to do multiple pixels, I can do so like this. So Let's say I just create this circle like that. Oof, that was pretty badly drawn, but okay, that'll work. So what we can do right now is show you how you can do a very, very simple animation using this guy. So I'm gonna go over here to animation, and now we can just go ahead and say, all right, add another frame. And the cool thing with this tool is there is a, um, a transformation tool available for pixel art style, and this is actually kind of rare. So now what we can do, so we're on our second frame, is I can just, with that selected, I can just come in here and do a straight out movement like that. And let's add another frame. And now I can come in like this, but I can also scale. So add another frame like that and scale down a bit more. And we'll add another frame as we're going back up now. And we'll scale back out. So as you can see, you can do freeform deformations on your um, created animation. And we can also do a two directional like that. And then we can play our animation. <laughs> So very simple to work with, very straightforward, but that uh, freeform translation tool is definitely quite cool. But now let's get into where this program really shines. Um, so I'm just gonna, yeah, we'll start a new project. So yeah, don't save that. I'll go over the same resolution I did before. So now what I can do is actually import an existing uh, not pixel art image. So I've got this guy I just downloaded off of the internet available right here. It's just a picture of an F-16 fighter like that with full background transparencies. And what I can do is import this guy into Pixel Mash and it will automatically be pixel artized. So that is, uh, that is a true word by the way. So here, there's my image, and there you see, it automatically created a pixel art representation of it. Now there's a number of programs that do this. There's nothing exceedingly special about that, but now let me show you some of the special effects we can do with this. Now this isn't just for imported, this is also for your, your hand-drawn work as well. Um, so now what I can do is add layered effects to it. So for example, if I wanted to have the outline done a little bit better, I could actually go ahead and select, uh, where are you? Da -da 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 outline like that. And there you see, we've got a drawn outline around our image and we can do different styles. So full or interior color or smooth. And you'll notice it actually does a remarkably good job of actually doing that outlined edge. And that's one of those areas where a lot of these programs that offer this, they don't necessarily do a good edge detection job. Whereas this one actually does look like what you would use if you were doing your own hand-drawn work. And speaking of which, another thing that's very common in pixel art is for automatic lighting. There's two or three programs that do this for you, uh, but they are actually often dedicated tools. And they're sometimes a little bit complex to work with. In this case, what I can do is go add and then we do auto shade like so 
and then you saw it automatically kicked in. So I can change the angle that the lighting effect kicks in at, and you'll see it's automatically applying that light source shading. And this is actually really cool when we start getting into um, uh, the animation. So then this shading will happen on a per frame basis. Now what we're, we've got right now is rounded. So let's instead switch that to directional. So you can see as the light comes in from a particular direction. And now what I can do is change out the banding of it. So I could change the color at each step like that. Let's make that one a little bit darker like that. So there you can see you can actually edit how that shading is going to work. And then as I mentioned earlier, when you move things around, that shading will apply and move with it. So that's that's pretty cool stuff. And then you can see the shading from different angles and directions. So it, it's pretty solid if you want to like simulate a light source on your scene. It, it, they do a good job here. And then in terms of other special effects here, we can um, dither down, we can add noise, we can color key to remove like a single color from the, the key going on. Uh, we can even also have it um, auto gradation where we can have it go so that it's gonna go between this color and that color. It's like auto grayscale basically, or but you pick the two colors that it's gonna choose between. If any time you wanna get rid of a special effect, you can just click X and get rid of it from the stack of effects. You'll notice these are applying on top of each other. So if I turn outline off, it is immediately updated. Uh, so now let's go ahead and add another effect. We can do things like colorize, like that. You can pick the color that you wanna accent to, like there. Uh, let's get rid of that guy. And we can also come in here and we could say, we've already done outline. We could restrict our color palette. This one's another one that's really kind of cool. A lot of times when people are working with um, like a fixed palette, you're trying to re recreate the style of an older machine. Well, what we could do here is actually um, cut the palette down to a, just a simple set of colors. So we could just come here and say, you know, this color, this color, and this color yeah, there and then your tolerance and then it will just use those colors which is very handy especially if you brought in uh, an image that it automatically pixelated but you want to now map it to your color map now speaking of colors we've also got so far you've seen we've worked from this palette selection over here but any particular time you can actually come over here i think you need to be in this mode Do I need to be in draw mode? Hmm. Well, you can add an existing color to the palette at any time. At the same time, we've also over here, we've got your typical layer support. So you can add new layers in. So I could draw on top like this. And then you'll notice that that is drawn behind. So obviously I can take that layer and move it up so that it is drawn above, or I can just get rid of it at any particular time. It is just, it's a cool, capable program. Now there's a lot of other programs that do similar stuff. That's for sure. Like there's no question that this is unique in what it does, but it does it in a way that is very easy to use, that works very well on uh, resolution independent. It performs well. Uh, it integrates a lot of tools like that sprite importing and the auto coloration and the fixed palettes uh, in extremely well. So what was it here? Basically, you can add colors to the palette. I don't, I'm, I'm doing it wrong at this point, so I apologize there. And then again, we've got our transformation tools. So I can do quickie, simple animations like this. So go over here to the animation tab. Let's add a frame. Let's move this guy down. Let's uh, add a frame. We'll move this guy down. We'll add a frame. Move this guy down. 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 Add a frame. And guess what? We're gonna move this guy down and out of frame. So let's play. Shoo. So there is our sprite flying across the screen. That was an animation that took me about seven seconds to make. And then what we can do is go ahead and export that image out. And you'll notice we have the options of adding it out as a ping, our ping sprite sheet, which obviously if you're doing animations, you want to export it out for game use in animated form, you would use that. And I can also pick and create an animated GIF. And we'll go ahead and we'll create that guy. I'll toss that on my desktop. And we'll call that Jet. Ooh. Or we'll call it dry because I missed my keys. And we'll go ahead and run that. Jet should be right here. And there is our animated GIF that we just created in but seconds. Oops. Uh, how do I zoom? That eh, doesn't really matter. You get the idea. There is an animated GIF that we created in just a few seconds. It's it's cool stuff. It's uh 
kind of a powerful tool. I'm, I'm not going to question that. Now, the only real question mark is at the end of the day, is it worth 25 bucks? And I can honestly see how it could be, but the value of money is so relative to, you know, how much money you have that uh, I'm not going to, um, you know, say that yes or no, that this is worth that amount. But I can definitely see the value here. It is a cool package and uh, yeah, I, I can. There are a few things that uh, I do find a little strange. Like I'm not 100% certain on how I can paint on a per frame basis. That functionality may not be available yet. So, for example, if I want to come in here and switch to, say, frame four, but I wanted to add flames out the back like this, so go into paint mode. Let's zoom in and then we'll just add some flames right here. Now, notice how it's getting the auto outline from the. Uh, from the layer effect that we added earlier. I think that's really cool. I, I, they do a really good job there. So if I wanted to add that flame effect, unfortunately now what it's gonna do is when I show the, it's gonna be on all frames. So I don't know how to do painting on a frame by frame basis. I don't know if that's functionality that needs to be added soon or that I just am, am you know, an idiot. It's possible either way, but there are still some missing features, but literally this guy just shipped and there's already a pretty impressive amount of functionality packed away in here. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Pixel Mash from Never Center. Once again, I'll toss this link up uh, or down below. So if you're interested in checking it out, please do so. And if you do check it out, tell me what you think of it. Now, there are a couple of uh, free tools. They're not coming ahead right now, um, but I know there are free alternatives that do a lot of the functionality here. And if you want to recommend one of those free tools over this one, please do so in the comments down below as well. I'm going to be doing a roundup of free art tools in the near future, so do stay tuned for that. But uh, in the meantime, that was Pixel Mash. Hopefully you found that interesting and uh, sorry Linux people, maybe next time. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.